Hello there. Thank you so much for joining us. This is News Channel Nebraska. My name is Eric McKay. Let's take a look at our top headlines today. Severe weather brought high winds, rain, cloud rotation, tree damage and power outages to the Omaha and Lincoln areas on Wednesday evening. City crews in Omaha worked through the night clearing fallen trees and other debris from the streets. There was widespread damage throughout Saunders County with trees that have stood for decades now littering lawns, branches strewn about, and a number of cars damaged. Residents told our news partners at WOWT6 News that Wednesday was the worst storm they've ever experienced. Knocked my chimney off the roof and then I got holes in it. And uh, man, I've never seen wind blow so hard in my life. Storm just started and there was trees blowing everywhere. We were just watching out the window. As half of our tree fell, trash cans were flying by. It's just a pretty wild, quick storm. OPPD said over 220,000 people lost power in their coverage area. That number was still above 100,000 as of Thursday morning. This after multiple 90 mile per hour wind gusts were reported in the Omaha area. Meanwhile, widespread damage reports also came in from the capital city. About 30,000 Lincoln Electric System customers lost power and city officials were passing along an urgent message to Lincoln residents to conserve water usage. City officials say the storms disrupted Lincoln's wells, temporarily limiting their water supply. That's since been fixed. The high winds also caused damage to the Lincoln Zoo. Zoo officials said no animals nor people were hurt, but they remained closed Thursday to assess the damage. Zooming out a bit, crews all over the U.S. battling almost 100 large active wildfires. It's according to the National Interagency Fire Service, some of the blazes are growing, even turning deadly. Amy Kiley has more. <laughs> Harrowing evacuations are underway for humans and animals as almost a hundred large active wildfires rage across the country. We are at planning level five. That's our highest level of fire response. Colorado officials report at least one death. It's linked to the Stone Canyon fire. We do have a lot of law enforcement resources staged here and also on standby that if we do need to do additional evacuations, we can ramp up quickly and get people out of harm's way. The state's also battling the quarry fire. It's spreading rapidly. We have a rattlesnake problem to deal with, so we have uh, a lot of things to be concerned about for our firefighters today. And Colorado faces the Alexander Mountain Fire. We have evacuated about 4,000 people on a mandatory evacuation and another 800 in voluntary evacuations. In California, the Park Fire remains the biggest challenge. Its burn mark now spans almost 400,000 acres. That's bigger than the city of Los Angeles. Rescuers are saving people and pets from harm. These dogs are repaying the favor, offering therapy to those who have lost everything. Ordering people out of their homes is always a tough thing to do. We recognize that the, the, the anxiety and the trauma that, that visits upon, upon people. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Leaders in Grand Island working to make sure residents are informed ahead of a special election this month. The group Grow Grand Island hosted an open house Wednesday answering questions people have about the proposed economic development program meant to pair with the city's newly approved Good Life District. Committee member Tanya Brown says events like Wednesdays allow people to get educated about the election. When people have questions and they don't have a good way to get them answered, then um, they're, they're not able to arrive at their vote, okay? They don't feel comfortable with their vote. But the fact that people will talk to other people, anyone who was here tonight and got their questions answered will talk to their neighbors. They'll talk to their friends and they'll say, no, 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 I know that answer. I was at the open house, I got that answer. And I think some of the best uh, information or best ways to get information out is organically. Good Life Districts are relatively new, authorized by the state legislature in 2023. In them, the state sales tax is slashed in half. Now, Grand Island is seeking to replace that reduced tax with a city tax that would help fund public infrastructure costs for new development in the district. 
Members of the committee say they've been active on social media, answering questions. As for the ballots, they can be mailed in or dropped off at the Hall County Election Commissioner's Office and must be received by 5 p.m. on August 13th. Nebraska's top election official, meanwhile, putting out the call for residents to help in the upcoming general election. Secretary of State Bob Evnen issued a video statement Thursday encouraging Nebraskans to serve as poll workers. Thursday is National Poll Worker Recruitment Day. Evden says running this year's general election smoothly means over 9,000 Nebraskans will need to volunteer their time at polling sites and county election offices. We couldn't hold our election smoothly and securely without the work of thousands of Nebraskans who step up and serve their communities as poll workers. Now we need your help to step up and help Nebraska vote Evden says the state pays poll workers for their time spent training. He says they're looking particularly for younger participants to fill the gaps left by older poll workers who can't serve anymore. Anyone interested can visit the Nebraska Secretary of State website to learn more. Well, car enthusiasts looking to draw fans to a certain retro car by building a new museum in central Nebraska. Ryan Valenta has more on their progress. Collectors have countless different things they collect, but no one in the state or country can say they have as big of a collection of Chevrolet Corvairs as Chris Shade. Hastings is the home to Shade's classic cars and now the Corvair Museum of America. The museum started off as a Corvair dealership and still is, but it's now undertaken a different role. We are a business, an operating business. For years, people have come in and seen our cars on our showroom floor here and said, wow, this is a museum. And I'm like, well, it's actually inventory, but uh, it is does represent the Corvair well historically. About 75 Corvairs, which are cars made in the 1960s, call the space in Hastings home. With increased interest from car enthusiasts from all over the country, Shade is looking to expand. The museum is looking to raise around $6 million to buy the property adjacent to their current building and to build an 18,000 square foot Corvair Museum. Since we've been operating about a little over last year as Corvair Museum of America, we've probably quadrupled our visitations from people all over the country. They're on road trips going coast to coast. Uh, they drop down off I-80, come in and typically unannounced and uh, we give tours and uh, answer questions. The museum has the blueprints for the expansion all figured out. It's just finding the support to raise money for their campaign, which the organization is trying to find continued support for at the national and local level. In addition to obviously internet promotion and promoting across the country, we've done a lot of uh, local promotion of the museum. We put on a car show in conjunction with Jerry Spady um, earlier this year, which raised money for not only the museum, but we also raised money for special scoops here in Hastings. The museum is still looking to finalize the purchase of the building next door, but Shade is hopeful that and enough money to begin the renovation process will happen sometime in 2025. Our visitors come in, they see the whole nine yards. They really don't miss any, any flavor of Corvair because they're all here and represented. In Hastings, Ryan Valenta, News Channel Nebraska. And a southeast Nebraska small town getting set for a big celebration this weekend. Doug Kennedy has our preview. The town of Wilbur, Nebraska, like most rural Nebraska communities, is quiet, kind of slow moving, kind of an easy pace most days of the year. But get ready to welcome 30 to 40,000 of your best friends this coming weekend. It's the 63rd annual Wilbur Czech Festival, and the town officially designated as the Czech capital of the USA. The festival starts Friday, with events packing the schedule through Sunday. You know, the festival is here, and and excited that our theme this year, Together We Can, uh, just expresses, you know, all the volunteerism and the, you know, and the coming together of the community to put on the festival. And we're, uh, we're very hopeful that uh, we exceed the 45 to 46,000 people. And um, we know the weather is, is going to be warm with a capital W but that's okay, you know, we've got spaces for people to get inside and, and cool off and, and uh, still be able to enjoy the, the festivities. Randy Kozell is the new president of the Nebraska Czechs of Wilbur, which uses an army of volunteers and committees to make sure things come off smoothly each year. About 50 different committees 
people chair those committees and then on those committees there's a total of somewhere between 320 to 330 volunteers spread out all those committees that that make it uh, possible and that you know that doesn't necessarily either include all of the people who help out from the city from the chamber of oh, uh, fire department all of those volunteers and people also mm -hmm. so it is it's truly a trying to keep the tradition of it being a family and friend event the Czech Festival features Saturday and Sunday parades, both at 2 p.m., and a national Miss Czech Slovak Queen pageant that will crown a winner Sunday night among nine participants this year. There are pre-celebration events and people start showing up early in the week, bringing their campers or staking out a spot along the parade route. Each year a special celebration logo is painted on the street at the Hotel Wilbur Beer Garden. Kelly Gifford is uh, the coordinator of that uh, and she comes up with a new design every year. Either some years it's connected to our theme, some years it's connected just to the Czech heritage, which is primarily one of the primary symbols is the heart. You know, so that's what she used this year, and it's all painted by hand. The painting was done by Wilbur Claytonia, girls basketball players. Gozell said if you haven't been to the celebration before, there are opportunities to learn about Czech heritage. Beginning at the stoplight with the Wilbur Czech Museum, and then coming up the street you have other, the Culture Center will have uh, demonstrations of authentic Czech cooking, and then uh, the hotel, you know, is on the historic register. Um, various businesses, uh, you know, have other types of Czech culture and heritage uh, available for people to read, to participate in. And then the other thing is the, the Czech dance. Friday night will feature a children's parade. Lots of vendors will be offering food and drink along with area churches and businesses. There's a carnival along Main Street. And throughout the weekend, Czech food, the junior and senior Czech dancers, and polka bands. From Wilbur, Doug Kennedy, News Channel, Nebraska. And you can stay up to date with the very latest by following us online. Head to newschannelnebraska.com. Click on the News tab there. You can also follow us on X. Like us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. You're watching News Channel Nebraska.